the best markets for swing trading on the long side and the short side are, you know, when the markets are strong. Like I, I keep telling this all the time. Like when, when the 10 day is rising, the 20 day is rising and the 10 day is above the 20 day, that's when you get really, really good swing trading markets. And right now, since March lows, you know, it's been the best trading market since the late 90s. We had a really good trading market from like October last year to mid February this year. And before that, it was a great trading market, like the first four months of uh, 2019. Before that, you know, like there's been like 2013 was a really good year. 2017 was a really, really good year. And then, you know, there are challenging years like or challenging periods where you really can't trade a lot. You have to be very selective. Like there are trades, obviously. But usually you don't get a lot of these stocks that double, triple. You just don't get them. You gotta be faster with profits. You know, for example, like to October, November, December 2018 was such a period. Like you, you didn't really get a lot of setups of the type I, I look for. So you, you, you just don't trade a lot. And then, you know, here too, during the Corona sell-off, there were no setups. There were no setups of the type I look for. And I'm getting a lit, little bit worried, like, you know, we're just going straight up and, you know, either we go parabolic, which would be totally epic if it happened. Like if we went, you know, straight up to like 320 or something, like low mid 300s in the, in the Nasdaq 100, that would be absolutely insane. And also the short opportunities that would arise. Oh my God. When was the breakout on Netflix? Hint, it was not today. Yeah, it's low ADR, but the setup is still valid. Like the setup was yesterday. That's when it broke out. Like, just look at this thing. It, it's been riding the 50 day, you know, built a really tight range. It started surfing the 50 day, put in a tight range, really tight range day. And then, uh, then it got a breakout. Like yesterday was the breakout. Like today, if you're buying it here, you know, you're probably not going to make it in trading. And yes, it's low ADR, but the setup, like the concept is the same. I use VWAP for shorts because I, uh, I, I found that VWAP works really, really well on momentum stocks. Because VWAP works really well. I don't know why, it just does. I don't, wh why are the moving averages? Why, why does the 10, 20 and 50 day moving average work so well for momentum stocks? Like, I, I don't know, maybe it's magic. I don't really care, they just do. They worked really well a hundred years ago and they still work really well. Like, it's just how the market behaves. There's very few indicators that work. Most indicators are just total bullshit, but some, they really... Uh, plug? Could be. Yeah, in a few days, yeah. Absolutely. Plug is, it's surfing the 10 day. Uh, yeah, if it, maybe next week, yeah. What I think of C, I think it, uh, it was a great buy here on this day when I bought it. And now it's just, you know, going higher. That's what I think of Z. There is no setup here. There's no setup here now. OTR key, yeah, a few more days. It's gonna look great. This is why you follow your sell rules. The first close below the 10 day. That's where I sold it. And now look at it. It's down another 55%. That's why you need specific uh, rules. You know, you can't trade blind. You need rules. If you wanna make millions, you need, you need rules. And, and, and I got a few comments about this thing. Like on this day here, the day before it broke out, you know, someone commented on YouTube, and I, I think also someone wrote to me on, on, uh, on in the in the chat, like, what do you see? Why do you see it as a long? Like they they did they couldn't get it. Like why is this a long? But it's very easy. It's a it's a momentum leader, made a big move. Like like this thing went up thousand percent in a few months, and then it pulled back. Gap down on earnings, but you look at where it found support on the one of the major uh, major moving averages, the 50-day. Found support on the 50-day, started building higher lows, had a range here, right? And then it broke out, and that's where we, where I bought it. You know, I was talking about this thing for several days, and then now look at it, straight up, pretty much. Ideal consolidation around three weeks. It depends. Usually a couple of weeks to a couple of months. That those are the sweet spots. Like. JD, for example, well, it depends, like it depends. JD was a couple of month consolidation, while something like AMD, that was only a couple of week consolidation. Shopify too, well, Shopify was also a couple of month consolidation. 
W was like a month consolidation. B Lee was also a couple of months. I would say generally a couple of months, a couple of weeks to a couple of months. Uh, thoughts on CLDX? Uh, nah, it's kind of, it's just a rat. Nah, it's not. Nah, no, ignore this one. There's nothing here. DAL, uh, uh, well, my, my thoughts was it wasn't a great setup. Why didn't you buy it opening like on this day here? Big C, if there was a setup, uh, uh, I don't know. It was kind of a tough, it was a very, very, very quick IPO base and then went straight up. Look, guys, uh, you know, Tesla is going to have an enormous pullback, okay, eventually. You got to wait for it. There's no, there's no reason to pick tops. There's no reason. Like, there's huge downside in this thing once it, you know, finally cracks. But, you know, it could go to 2,500, 3,000 before it pulls back. We, we don't know. You know, I'm just moving my stop higher uh, since I'm long. And, uh, you know, when I, when, I see, when I see this thing starting to act bad, well, that, that's when I'll sell my long and maybe start considering going short. But I have no desire trying to pick a top on this thing. Just let it run its course. It, it, like, it's not a true parabolic, and like it's so above all the moving averages, so I, I just don't see an entry, entry signal. Yeah, Beyond Meat looks pretty decent. I don't know what why it's up. Is it news or? It's, it looks like um, yeah, it's a, taking out a nice range. So those of you who were who were early on it, congrats. I think it's news. It started moving pre-market on volume, opening range highs. What's the entry? Yeah, exactly. Analysts are just price followers, right? The market drops, they revise their price targets lower. The market rises, they revise them higher. You know, you can see it all the time with stocks and the, and their like index price targets. They're just price followers, but they're lagging with big lag. Our job as traders is pretty much to do the same thing, but more in real time and profit from the from the actual moves but you will never get an analyst to admit they're just uh, a trend followers you'll never you never get an analyst to admit that they're like no but our spreadsheets are a deep fundamental analysis the thing is no one knows nothing no one knows anything the market can do anything at any given time you can have all these fancy price targets they don't matter really you know they, they don't matter anything you gotta, you gotta, you know, look at action in real time. Put your opinions aside and, you know, just trade, trade the price action. Like, look, just because the stock is going up doesn't mean it had a good setup or, you know, look. There's a lot of stocks that go up without, you know, showing good setups. Like, NIO had a setup here. Like, I, I would have preferred a few more days of sideways, okay? This is when it broke out. I even, you know, see this red line? I've even marked this breakout. But like, like well, well, where's the breakout here? I don't see any good breakout here. Like, I just don't see it. Yeah, what the real Gary says. Keep belief simple. No conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Beliefs that limit your uh, potential. Yeah, exactly. The fewer things you th worry about, the better your trading is going to be. There's always going to be, you know, things affecting your trading and stuff like that there's always gonna be some politician or some you know the fed or trump or china or russia or this or that or market makers or elon or you know there's always gonna be something stick to your stick to your methods stick to your setups that's all you need to be for you know focus on price action that's all you need to be worried about none of, none of the other stuff is gonna make you money why ttd looks really good Made a big, big move. It's been surfing the 20 day, the whole day, uh, the whole time for months and months. And now it's going sideways and getting tighter and tighter. FSLR, um, yeah, you know, I, I would have preferred more sideways, but that, that's when the breakout happened. Right now, there's nothing here. It's in limbo. You know, it, it, it had a tight day of the te rising 10 day, and then it had a range break candle. And now it's kind of trying to grind higher. But me too, I would have preferred uh, more sideways. How do you overcome being able to buy stocks like Shopify, Tesla Square when they already... Well, you look at thousands of leaders from the past and you will see that 
Many times the extended stocks become more extended. That's how you build confidence in your setups. You need to put in the study. Like you're not going to learn trading, like become profitable traders by just watching, you know, what I do on the stream. You need to spend your weekends, you need to spend your evenings, you need to spend your spare time by, you know, taking the lessons that you get you get from me and you know you know like the like the setups and then you look at thousands of past leaders over the past decades how did they move you will see wait it's the exact same setups over and over again building my database and finish the letter b i do this eight to twelve hours a day you're you're, you're gonna make tens of millions over the next five to ten years if not more i guarantee you that that's what needs to be done you need to do those you need to build that database. You need to, and mainly you need to build that database in your head. It's good to have it, uh, you know, in some place like in a folder or Evernote or OneNote or something where you can, you know, go back and look at those setups just, you know, every couple of weeks or so, you know, just refresh your, refresh your brain. Uh, but mainly, you know, you want those setups in, ingrained in your brain. No one else is going to do it for you. You need to do it yourself. So, you know, if you spend, wait, you spend 8 to 12 hours a day building the shard database? That's incredible. Jesus, that's, that's fucking incredible. Do you sleep? <laughs> when do you sleep? How do you, you, how can you tell a momentum leader? You scan for the top one or two, you know, the top uh, biggest gainers. Like I, I've, you know, I made a lot of videos about uh, scanning and stuff like that. Go review my short swing uh, swing trading school on YouTube. It's all there. A momentum leader is a stock that's, uh, you know, among the one or two percent top gainers over a certain period of time. It could be one month or three months or six months or twelve months or whatever. Yeah, I like TB. It looks pretty decent. It looks uh, like a random pump. I don't think there's, you know, it it's probably not gonna go unless it gets a PR or something. Eduk, yeah, maybe. It's a very thin stock, but good maybe. Plug, uh, there's no good setup here. Needs to go sideways. BLDP and it's the other one, fuel cell. Yeah, the whole sector is kind of strong, but they need to go sideways. The whole fuel cell sector. XP, uh, yeah, two days ago was a potential setup. Now it's just nowhere. There are better ones than this out there. Yeah, shorts, you know, you have to, because, you know, longs, they can go up hundreds and hundreds of percent, and you really don't know when they're going to stop. So you need to have some kind of trailing stop. But shorts, you know, like, if you short something, is it likely go, to go down more than, say, 40, 50, 60 percent? Like it's very unlikely go, to go down more than 40, 50, 60 percent in a reasonable amount of time. Let's just say a few weeks. So you you gotta you know every time it goes down five, ten percent, you gotta take a piece off. Yeah, I, I shorted some overstock, but you know maybe I'll take it just a decent loss on it, like I did on Friday. It's kind of getting below the 20 day. Like now the 20 and 10 are kind of maybe starting to act less like. Uh, uh, resistance instead of support combined with a high lower highs on the 60 minute chart like I think this thing could go down reasonably 50% over the next few weeks or few months uh, it's easy to borrow like you know I, I want to be in this thing in case it go or maybe not 50% but you know 30 40% very reasonable over the next few weeks yeah GBTC setting up yep uh, yeah it's, it's flagging nicely it's been surfing the 10, 20 days, and now the 20 day has almost caught up. It has a range share, kind of. Uh, like, I barely sold any shares since I bought it here. In the, was it 12s? High 11s. I still, I had 60,000 shares. I've only sold 2,500. I think this thing could double, triple from here. Like, if crypto really gets hot again, you know, it could go crazy. I really wanna, I'm looking to add. If I can double my position, that would be awesome. NCLH, cruise line. Um, I think this one looks pretty good for a potential long. I just don't have much buying power. I'm kind of heavily long, but I may do one or two of these cruiser airlines. No crazy size or anything. But 
ISRG, I actually saw this one during the weekend. This thing looks insane. It's a very low ADR. Don't trade it, but yeah. Yeah, it's a very clean looking flag. But this is, you know, I mean, making a 10% move, it's, it's, an, it's an effort for this thing. If I like stamp, yeah, uh, stamp looks great. Just too thin for me to trade. Yeah, it only trades a couple of hundred thousand shares on average. Uh, so yeah, it's too thin for me. I, I can't trade it, but it looks good. It's a four and a half star setup, five star setup even. SC starting to set up. Uh, yeah, the 10 day needs to catch up, maybe later this week. AM, it's a net gas name. Yeah, it's setting up. What are RRC? No, this one is not SWN, COG. Okay, AM. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of setting up. Tupperware. Yeah, it is setting up. Yep, it is. Now the 20 day has caught up. I think it may, may be finally ready to go. It's putting a really tight day on, on Friday. This thing is a really good setup. Very thin, but very good setup. Yeti. Yet is too thin for me, but and there's no setup here either. I almost have to show this. This is almost this is amazing. L look at this guy just followed me on Twitter. Shatru moderator specializing in astrology sh signals. Oh boy. Yeah. So when the moon crosses the sun, is that's a buy? Exactly. All the stars have the line. The stupidity people, you know, invent. Like, instead of studying, like, how the stocks work, like, how stocks move, people invent these, like, weird, weird theories and indicators, like, they have no, absolute no basis in reality. It's kind of amazing how the uh, human mi mind works. Why high volume is significant? Because if you study thousands of stocks over the past uh, 50 plus years, you will realize, oftentimes, it's a... Uh, uh, high volume uh, move that started that start th that starts big moves. Cars, if the setup looks good, it looks good. You know, momentum is all that you really need to focus on. Like it helps if you it also has earnings and revenue. But I don't think it's like a momentum leader. But I don't know. Maybe it could work. I would see like to see more tightness on it. Uh, also bought AMD. It bounced perfectly off the. 20 day moving average and then on the 60 minute uh, short it took out this range uh, so that's where I bought it and I'm using this like low 80 ones as my stop for it not the lows of the day that would be crazy w what about UAVS what are we looking at here is there a setup here 50 bounce yeah but just because it bounces off the 50 day doesn't make it a buy you want to have a you want to have a range like you want this thing to like surf on the moving average like, you know, a bounce of a major moving average could be a buy, but that's not really the type of setup I'm trying to teach you. Like, you can create a setup around anything, but to make tens of millions, you only need to focus on one setup and master that one setup. My job is uh, to make you guys focus, not to jump from method to method, doing this, doing that. How do you know what setup? That, that's why you need to, like I say it on every stream, you need to spend a few thousand hours studying stocks studying uh, past moves and see what how they move you can probably find two three four setups very easily and then you only need to master one of them to make tens of millions what's the name of the setup the name of the setup if you put in the work you'll make tens of millions that's the name of the setup run uh, i think run looks pretty decent not a five star setup maybe if four star three and a half maybe but i think it looks pretty decent i would i would prefer one more day of sideways or two more days of sideways but it looks decent mobile uh, what but where you know what's what's the setup here do you buy it on this day here in case you know in that case you should start selling by monday or tuesday or wednesday you sell a third or half on monday or tuesday on your like day three four or five and then you just trail with the 10 day moving average then you won't need any price targets. You see, then you will have a systematic way of capitalizing on moves. You don't need price targets. I look for mainly like these really, really overextended stocks, okay? So what I look for are true parabolics or some kind of backside. For example, overstock, like this thing has been straight up 5,000% without any major pullbacks. Uh, and you know what I was looking for was some kind of weakness. So that's what that's what we got. We got a series of lower highs. You can see it on the 60-minute chart too. 
we got this thing built lower highs for four days and then it like i talk about this 10 and 20 ema on the 60 minute chart like when these things go from acting as support to acting as resistance and when they start sloping down that marks a momentum shift so i shorted this thing here 117 high 117s when it broke uh, below this uh, little range here after it built lower highs because it started showing some weakness and now in hindsight i guess i should have added to it somewhere here but i didn't but that's fine any books no there are no good short selling books pfizer i can uh, uh, even before i pull up the chart i can tell you it's not because of this simple reason look at this number 1.6 what the fuck come on 1.6 in adr You'll never make any money trading these kinds of stocks. So no, I don't think uh, Pfizer is a good play here or there or anywhere. Yeah, SHLL, you know, and this is why you use the 10 day moving average as your trailing stop, because this thing could go to 40, 50 before the move is over. You don't know that. That's why you always trail. If you want to make big money, you got to be in the big winners. And the only way to be in big winners is to have some kind of trailing stop. Just like that. That's where you gotta be in the markets. Like you can't go away because you know things are not following through because you never know when you know things start working again. You gotta be there. You know, you gotta be there. The market doesn't trade on your schedule or on or on your feelings, you know. You gotta be there when the market is ready. Not when you are ready. Thought on apps? Uh yeah. Uh if you buy it here you will never make any money in your life. That's the name of this setup. Oh, you mean on the short side? Uh, I, I don't think there's a short a setup on the short side either. It, it's not. It's just grinding higher. There's like no. To sh you know, if you're looking for parabolic shorts, you need something that uh, one is getting really, really stretched, or two is starting to show backside. Like for example, overstock. This is a, like a, a stock that's up what four thousand percent this year, and now it's starting to show signs of potential backside like it's starting to violate the 10 and 20 day uh, 20 10 and 20 emas but the jury is still out on this one like you could very easily reclaim and go to 150 or something but you know i'm just kind of betting on it that it's gonna fade but that's what stops are for but apps is not really uh you know there's you know it's just you know grinding higher there's no short setup here what return am I looking for per week? You can't look at it that way. You, you take what the market gives you. But generally, you know, when I take a trade on the short side, I usually want at least one to five, preferably one to 10 risk reward ratio. And on the long side, I, I want to see at least uh, 10 times uh, potential on my risk, preferably 20, 30. But at least 10 times. I don't bother with, you know, 1 to 5 or 1 to 3. That's just a waste of time. Like something like Tesla, when I bought it initially, low 1500s, I think I put my stop in the mid... I think I had like a 50... Uh, sorry, not 50 cent. $50 stop on it initially. And now it's up $500. So it's up 10 times my risk. That's, that, those are the trades that kind of make you big money. The ones where you make 10, 20, 50 times your initial risk. That's how you can have a 25% win rate and still make many millions. Don't fall into that trap. Oh, I need a 70, 80% win rate. Oh, I need at least 50% win rate. It's all bullshit. If you need a 70% win rate to make money, like your edge is shit. You need a big edge. Like unless you're a day trader. They're a little bit different mechanics in day trading. You just can't get the same risk reward. Mara? Yeah, Mara. Yeah, this is the one I, I sold. And I thought I sold the low. So I think I sold it somewhere here. 430s. Or, I don't remember when it went. And then it went briefly higher. And now it's just straight down. That's why you don't mess around with something that uh, makes a shelf. Like three times market cap. Or two times market cap. Or whatever it was. You don't mess around with that. That's some serious selling. Uh, but Riot is, is setting up though. Riot is setting up a nice flag. I will add to this thing if it starts breaking out next week.
So who should it show up in your scans? Yes, it should. So who is a really beautiful setup. And it's, uh, it's like this thing is up, what, 200, almost 200% in the past three, four months. This thing, and it's kind of liquid too. Or it, not very liquid, but it trades like more than 10 million in dollar volume generally. So yeah, I think it should be in your scans. This thing should be in your scans. What's the ADR? 10.2. Yeah, it should be. Like this is a really beautiful setup. It is definitely a momentum leader. It should be in your scans. But does you can make money risking only 1%? What the hell are you talking about? Of course you can make money risking only. What do you 1% is a lot of risk. If you have 10 losing trades in a row, you're going to lose 10% of your account. If you have like 10 winning trades in a row where you make you know 10 20 times your initial risk, you're going to double your account. 1% risk is a lot of risk. Yeah, I'm not I'm not talking about the position size. I'm talking about the risk on the trade. Like your position sizes, they should be like you know, they're probably going to be around 10 to 20% of your account. But I'm talking about the risk on a trade, not the position size. Of course, you should never put 1% of your account in a stock. That's just a waste of time. PA? Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's working, but was it a good setup? Well, actually, it was a good setup. You know what? Yeah, it was a good setup. It had one month momentum. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. If you caught it at the opening range highs, you did well. You know, that was a good setup. Make my trip. Uh, what do you see here? Does it resemble anything like a setup I'm not trying to teach you guys? You should go and uh, review my swing trading school videos on YouTube. You, you shouldn't be doing any trades until you review those videos. D-Dog. Uh, yeah, this is a tough one. It also had a setup here, but these are like these kinds of setups are a little bit tough when they are like this thing was below the 10, 20, and the 50-day moving average. Um, yeah, so it's a bit tough one. I, I don't think it's a good setup here. You know, like there's so many other ones. Like there's stuff like, not well, obviously this one reports tomorrow, but stuff like Coupa. Well, this is long gone, but you have stuff like you know Pinterest and Roku and Shopify and TTD. You know, focus on the best ones, easier setups. KR. Uh, it's not a momentum leader. Also, what's the ADR? What's, what does it say here? It's 1.7%. This thing shouldn't even be in your scans. This thing should not be in your scans. What I helped, what I learned from Stoppy, focus on the top momentum stocks. That's, I think, the biggest takeaway from uh, Pradeep. Focus on the top momentum stocks. I mean, there's a lot of things I learned from him, but... And also, like... Uh, you know these uh, these things like uh, like you you want you want to see tightness before a breakout or some kind of range break and linearity also like uh, a linear stock something like Shopify that keeps finding support on these major moving averages uh, you know tra trades very smoothly versus something like I don't know KR that doesn't trade smoothly. You know, it took me a long time to, you know, see the difference between those two types of, of shorts. But it's going to be taken care of. You just focus on the top momentum stocks. Yeah, the strongest stocks, they keep going up at least for, uh, for, some, for some time. They're not going to, you know, obviously go up forever, but for, for some time, you know, you need to focus on good setups. Yeah, HEQ, I'm, I'm stalking it. It's a silver ETF. Like, it looks good. It looks good. Like, you know what? I should probably buy some here. I, I should. I, I just don't have the buying power. Uh, I, it looks good. It looks good. HEQ, it looks good, man. I should, I should be buying it. It's not super liquid. But, man. Oh, man. Uh, it's a triple ETF of, of silver, obviously. And silver looks good. Look how smooth this thing is. This is silver. It, it trades like a small cap stock. It trades like a momentum stock. Look at this thing. It's so, you know surfing the 20 day. Surfing the 10 and 20 day moving averages. Okay. Pulled back. 
finding support on a rising 20 day, it undercut the 20 day, reclaimed, and now it's, you know, this is super strong. Incredibly strong. Hobbs, Hobbs is a shoppy name. Uh, well, actually, it's, well, yeah, it's kind of, it's a slower type of a name. But yeah, it, it's a pretty, you know, it's, it's not a good setup here. It's too, it, it's just one of those stocks that it's, it's too shoppy. Like this whole run, like this thing is just tripled and there was not a single good setup on it. Like th there was a potential setup here, like on this day here, but it would have stopped you out the next day. I mean, it's just some stocks are just too hard. Some stocks are just not meant to be traded. Same thing with NOW. This is also like, well, now it has some follow through from the breakout here, but it's also like, I, I've been st watching this stock for years. It pretty much never has a good setup. Some stocks are like that. And then you have stocks like Tesla, AMD, Nvidia. They just give you setups over and over again. The shorter the time frame, the higher the fail rate is gonna be though. But sometimes you can get in really, really early. Many times the 60 minute opening range is just too wide. The stock is already way gone. Like some, like VBIV for example. If you waited for a 60 minute opening range breakout, you bought it at five bucks. I did add there personally, but you know, it's just way too high. There's no reason to wait that far you know that long when when you can get it like on the one or the five minute opening range highs like oh like a couple of minutes after the open it was already obvious this was going to be a very high volume day like this thing traded how much two three and a half million shares in the first two minutes and the average daily volume on this thing is like what 10 million shares so in, in just the first two minutes it traded a third of the average daily volume so you kind of saw it pretty early, it was going to get significant. AMD faked you out at 84? What do you mean it faked you out? How could it fake you out at 84? I mean, how... like, I don't get it. Oh, you bought at 84? Well, that wasn't really a good entry. Like, the entry was... The entry was yesterday. But, like, I see what you see, like... I mean, okay, I mean, there, there was like an, uh, uh, yes and no, like, I think the better entry was yesterday, but there, there was an, you know, maybe entry here today, uh, when it, I kind of anticipated the uh, uh, breakout yesterday. Do I have a specific diet? Uh, well, I, I'm, uh, doing periodic fasting, so I don't eat breakfast. I'm doing like, I'm trying to do like 16, eight, where I eat for eight hours. Don't eat for 16, but it's usually more like 14, 10. Uh, and the first meal of the day is a highly purified uh, protein shake with double rich chocolate taste. And then I eat uh, seven and a half avocado toasts. And I also put guacamole on my avocado toast. I wash it down with some uh, filtered green tea. Then I brush my teeth for 4 minutes and 45 seconds with the highest quality toothpaste and that's also part of my diet I swallow the tooth uh, tooth uh, paste I heard it's very nutritious that's just my uh, that's just my breakfast routine or, or like lunch routine do you want to, uh, me to talk about the rest of my meals too exactly it's low carb toothpaste no carb toothpaste uh, guacamole and avocado are not the same things. Guacamole, it's like uh, you put some, you know, you, you kind of smash it, right? And then you put like some uh, spices in it also, right? Like uh, avocado toast, then you just smash the avocado. But if you put guacamole on it, it gets better. <laughs> Do you wipe front to back or back to front? <laughs> it's a secret. I don't wipe. Yeah, guys, you know, if you're going to swing trade, you, you need to I aim at least 1 to 10 risk reward. You know, if you're aiming to 1, for th 1 to 3, 1 to 5, like a lot of day traders are, you know, it's just not going to cut it if you're swing trading. You need small losers and big winners. Small losers, big winners. QDEL is another 
uh, flag I'm watching that may result to the downside. Right now it's still building higher lows, but it could result to the downside. How I use the daily short versus the 60 short. 60 short, the 60 minute I usually use to get the higher resolution. And also like on like big momentum names, I use like the 10 and 20 EMAs, but I usually use them for like shorting. Like I wanna see them starting to act as a resistance versus being support. How I approach a bear market? Uh, yeah, you can trade bear flags. I don't really trade that much during a bear market. There will be fewer trades and shorter trades. Bear markets are tough, you know. You know, there there are fewer things that are make big moves. Yeah, like triple ETFs and stuff like that. But you know, it's still you know the the opportunity to set this much limmer. Please switch to day trading no thanks i'd rather take time off exactly you only need one bull market to f change your fi financials uh, you, you only need one bull market to get rich there there is there is there's no need to sit there and squeeze water out of a stone during a bear market yeah t doc stopped me out too i had a perfect entry i had a lot of size i had like 15000 shares uh, in like 191, 192 area or something down here, and then it stopped me out, and now it's up um, 20 over 20 percent since. I love it. Trading is easy. Every everyone uh, who try will make this will make it in trading. Yeah, I mean, look, these kinds of when stocks that go absolute, like when it when it double triple in a very short amount of time. Yeah, 10 day may not be a reasonable, like you, you can, you can like use maybe lows of this day here as your stop or something like that. Yeah, the 10 day may be a little bit, you know, I don't know where you bought it or if you bought it. But after a certain point, you gotta be moving your stop a bit faster than the 10 day moving average, especially like this one, like it's, it's, it's a triple in the past two, three weeks. Like, let's look at setups and like, I can see. Up, you know, these low ADR stocks can be tricky traders, but there was a potential setup here. But these kinds of stocks, they're more like grinders. They just keep grinding. They don't have these clean breakouts so many times. Sometimes they do. But look at how nicely it's been surfing the 10 and 20 day. Very linear. This is like what a institutional stock look like. Yeah, 2 trillion. Amazing.